Hello everyone, this is Ming Lan Yu from Harvard University. Today we're going to hear a burst talk on P4 workshop. Uh, this is from Fabricio Rodriguez. Um, he is a PhD student from University of Campinas, Brazil. Uh, he has been uh, working actively on um, SDN programmable data plane, forwarding models, and P4 languages. Um, he received uh, his uh, Networks and Data Communication, Electrical Engineering degree from Army University and Master degree from uh, University of Cabinets of Brazil. Um, Fabricio, please start. Okay, so hello everybody. This is Fabricio from the University of Campinas. And I'm going to present our work, quadcopter implementation of an in-network centralized collision avoidance algorithm in programmable data planes. So powered by the 5G technology, quadcopters are becoming an important application, but factors in the environment, such as unexpected obstacles or quadcopters need to be considered in these scenarios. Not reacting in time can entail in a collision, damages in the devices, or even human injuries. Because of this, quadcopters are connected to powerful remote APIs to continue monitoring and performing actions if needed. In 5G scenarios, these APIs can be in the MIC cloud or in an external cloud. But if we need an ultra low latency application with low delay, depending where the APIs are located, we are going to be affected by, by a horizontal delay. There are the distance between the nodes and the nodes processing and vertical delay. There are because of the NICs, the operational system, the hypervisor, the application processing. And how we can improve that? Well we can add some remote API functions in the edge device. If we're thinking in a quadcopter scenario, if a device needs to move to a new position, there are three approaches that can be, uh, there are some approaches that can be taken. For instance, in a distributed scenario, the drones talk, talk with each other and perform actions based on that. We can also have a centralized scenario where the remote API having all the view of the environment take the important actions. And these can even be improved by the use of P4, having all the flexibility and scalability and a full view of what is happening in the network. But what kind of applications we can add to a P4 device? Well, we can add, for instance, a collision avoidance algorithm or a path planning algorithm. Of course, that when working with P4, we need to consider it its benefits, but some of the possible limitations as the use of complex operations, for instance. Uh, just to, fin to finalize, this is an overview of how the communication between the quadcopter and the remote API works and how we can implement a collision avoidance, for instance, using a vector field histogram approach that uh, basically what it's going to do is going to sell, uh, save all the information of the environment in a histogram that can be used to detect and prevent collisions. So it's basically that. If, thank you. And there, if there is any doubt that we would like to discuss more, please feel free to contact me. Yes, thanks for the short but excellent talk. Um, I have a few questions just to clarify. First, like in your, in your first slide, you mentioned that there are different locations that we can put the remote API. Could you uh, elaborate more on what other um, differences uh, in terms of their effectiveness um, mm -hmm. and um, like constraints of uh, using them at different places? Yeah. Okay, so basically the, the remote API, what it's going to have are all the important tasks that mm -hmm. the drones need to perform. Uh, these remote APIs can be located in an external network, what is an external network. So we can have a drone scenarios here, for instance, and someone in the other side of the world trying to control in this. So this is going to be a remote API located in an external network. Mm -hmm. But in this kind of scenarios, we are going to have a lot of delay because of the distance of where is this located. So we can bring these remote APIs closer to where we are where we are now and where is our, our scenario. So in these cases, we can have the remote API in an MIC, MIC cloud. 
So in these cases, this remote API is going to be close to our access network or our, our scenario. We are going to reduce this delay. Um, probably we are going to maintain all the functionality of uh, the complete remote API functions. So in terms of this, we can remove, re reduce a lot of the, the, the latency, but we are still have all the cloud processing, the uh, application processing, and we have some delay here mm -hmm. in these remote APIs, even if they are closer in an MIC cloud. So in our idea is to put this even closer to the scenario. So we are trying to remove some, not remove, to add some of these uh, remote API functions into the, the P4 device that is going to be close to the, the scenario, just in the, the edge device. Okay, thank you. Um, another question. So uh, you mentioned that um, your, your work is on um, building in network like centralized uh, solution in P4. It addresses some of the limitations of traditional centralized approach, but there's still a distance with the distributed approach. So I wonder, um, do you imagine in the future with the uh, go to the distribute move to some like P4 based distributed solution or um, it, basically is there any limitations for your current centralized solution based on P4? Mm -hmm. Well, so when all these scenarios were planned like the, these distributed centralized the scenarios, the networks were not so efficient. They doesn't have the efficient that we have now. So we were thinking in the past about, okay, we need a lot of bandwidth. It was a huge limitation. We were not able to perform good actions without good bandwidth. That's why I distributed a scenario. It's better than a centralized scenario, for instance. But it, we are thinking the new generation of networks like 5G and maybe the new ones, uh, the bandwidth is something that we can achieve. It's something that we can have and we, we, need, to, we, we need to worry about that, but it's something that it's not so critical. So now we can think that some centralized scenarios that were not considered in the past can be something that can improve uh, things in, the, in, in our approaches. And uh, even now that we have the P4 that has some more benefits to the network like that, it's closer to, 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 to the scenario, we can think that these centralized scenarios can start growing up again and can be similar to the distributed ones. I know that the distributed ones have some important characteristics like that all the devices can work by themselves and can perform some actions. But if we think in an organized scenario where, where some remote API can have all the view of the network and can take actions quickly to, to prevent any collisions or, or things like that, I, think, I guess that a centralized scenario with a remote API functions near to the, to the edge can be a good option and can work even faster than in a distributed scenario. Great, thank you. Uh, one last question. I know you have a short talk, so you didn't have time to get into the collision avoidance algorithm. Uh, can you give us a few hints on what's the difference um, of your proposed collision uh, avoidance algorithm comparing to uh, traditional centralized uh, algorithms yeah. because of the, the move towards P4? Mm -hmm. Well, there are some things that we need to change in, in for this kind of, of implementation. Because if we have the remote API, the collision avoidance in the remote API, for instance, we can have complex mathematical operations that can perform very accurate actions and can prevent everything. Now, if we want to implement the same in the P4, okay, we, we have the limitations that we cannot perform complex operations, complex mathematical operations. So we need to simplify that kind of operations. So we need to reach a point where even if we simplify these uh, complex operations, these complex mathematical operations, we have a good performance in terms of latency, in terms of time and reacting time, uh, packet loss, and things like that. So in critical scenarios where an action that takes more than five milliseconds, for instance, can, 
can finish in a collision or, or in an injury. Reacting in time is really important. And if for any reason, the remote API cannot act so fast. Moving these simplified actions to, to this P4 device can, can be a good option. I know that there's going to be a simplified uh, collision avoidance, not, not with all the great performance intent of smooth movements or uh, good, uh, good trajectories with uh, an exact uh, positions, but it's going to be a good approach that uh, even being simplified is going to act uh, accordingly to uh, uh, what our collision avoidance algorithm need to act. Great, thank so, you. Um, yeah, so yeah, well, nice I, I guess that if, if, if someone wants to discuss more more details about this, how the vector field histogram works, for instance, I guess that can, can contact me because there are a lot of things to talk and, and in this yes. course talk, there, we don't have a lot of time to discuss. In yes, um, that's good. Yes, thank you very much. Um,